How's it going everybody? So today I'm gonna do something a little different. Um, I'm going to be showing how I put together my wing um, and my kind of way that I pack the wing up. Um, I use a couple different techniques. I use the like more like crocheting technique of the, the lines to keep them so that nothing is uh, getting tangled. Uh, I keep the risers in a riser bag. And the other thing I do is I, um, I pull up all of the leading edges of the wing and I fold, put them all together and then I fold those in towards the center. So I know that's pretty common but to do them both together I haven't seen too many people do that. Um, I'm going to show you how I do that um, and explain why I do that a little bit more. So to start out I usually just bring the bag out to the field and I lay it down like this. Um, when I do that um, I come in. This bag is really nice because it's got the backpack straps on it. So obviously you undo the buckle. Um, I like to take all the line that, that ties this up together and I like to make kind of a, um, oh I don't know, like kind of like a slip knot here. So I like to pull that out, um, that can be a little bit tricky. But when I do that out, get that out, I obviously undo the little uh, clip that's retaining it here and then I will just start pulling the risers out of the bag. So like I said, I'll take that strap thing and I will pull that all the way out and it's pretty long string. Um, make sure that that bag can fully inflate like I said or so that you can get the uh, the wing in the bag correctly. So the first thing I like to do is I like to just grab my risers at the bottom here and you can see how I have these braided. Um, I'm going to show a little bit better on how I like to braid those. The nice thing about this is, is once you just pull on the back of the risers the only thing that you have to do is you have to just start pulling. Now I'm going to try to show it here. But all you have to do is when you pull that, the lines will literally undo themselves if you've done it correctly. So I don't have to unfold anything. All I have to do is pull. And then I have all my risers right here. And then I can uh, just just be ready to lay out. And then, you know, I could even just pull my wing out a little bit from the bag. And then I like to just set my risers down and come back, make sure nothing's, nothing's looking like it's tangled. And you can see here, this is how I fold the leading edge. So I will grab the leading edges and I will fold them into the wing. So I'll uh, set the tripod up and I will uh, kind of show how I like to play the wing. Like I said, I'll just come in here, I'll pick up the wing, and I will kind of just lay it out. And I'll start to pull out the wing, obviously going in to the wind. The wind's coming right from this direction today. Do that. See how easy that was just to pull out because of the way that I lined those rifles. So now this wing is basically ready to just start inflating and you can do what you want. You can do your kiting or you can uh, you know, get it laid out and make a good wall and then So from here obviously I'm going to just start kiting the wing up. So I like to just grab the A's and I'm in a little bit of wind today. I'm not in too much. Um, grab the A's, pull it up and just let that fall back down. And you want to just build a really nice wall and just let that fall in on itself. That's the best way that I've found to do it. Um, most people do it very similarly. Um, but the main thing I'm going to try to show in this video is not the kiting aspect. There's tons of great videos on how to kite. Um, whether or not you should clip in in certain situations. Or, uh, you know, making sure that it's safe to even clip in. Um, but I'm going to kind of show more or less why I fold up the wing the way I do. And the reason that I do that is because I think that it makes the longevity of the wing uh, go a lot further. So we'll show that here in just a little bit. So after you've had a great time kiting and you, uh, you know, hopefully improve some of your skills that you're honing in on, um, you're gonna want to pack up the wing. Um, so when I'm packing up the wing, the first thing I like to do is create a rosette. And I like to do that by just kind of building up a little bit of a wall and then I will lay the, the risers down and I will just start pulling in all the strings towards the center, which is what a rosette is. Um, and I, I guess I'll show you how to do that now. So like I said, I, want, I like to build a, uh, a nice little wall, um, like I've done here. I, I like to pull the A's a little bit, and I like to get some air up in the wing. 
And then what I'll do is once I get some air in there, I'll just lay it flat. I'll let those risers fall right down. Now, at this point, I'll come down and I will kind of, I'll kind of like whiplash the, the lines towards the center a little bit more. What this does is it brings, it brings the, uh, all the lines right to, towards the middle of the risers. And so from there, I'll lay the risers down. I'll come up and I will, I'll grab them, all of the lines, and I'll just kind of like pull in. You can bring the risers with you or you can leave them down. Um, with the camera, it's a little bit harder to do both. Um, so what I'll do is I will kind of, I'll have the risers in my hand and I will just continue to pull in towards the center of the wing until that wing is basically into like a, a, a good ball or cylinder shape. And I'll kind of show that here. So like I said, I like to bring in the wing by just pulling in on the all the strings, on the lines. And I'll do that, and you can see that the, the ends of the, uh, the wing they pull in. You kind of just want to like puff it up like that, so you have a nice kind of ball shape there. And you have the lines in your hands like this. So from this point, what I like to do, I like to lay the lines down, and then I like to take the lines while they're laid down flat, and I like to run them all the way back um, until they're basically stretched out with still the rosette right in the middle. So like I said, I do a technique that's a little bit different than what most people do. I actually braid the lines. Um, well, braid is not quite the right, correct term. I believe what it is actually is crocheting. Um, so the way that I do that is I'll come behind the camera here so you can kind of get my view of when I'm doing it. So like I said, what I like to do is I actually like to braid the lines. So what I do at this point is I have all of my lines, my risers, um, or my risers put together here, but I have all my lines pretty well straightened out. So what I do, as I grab, maybe about, uh, maybe a little less under than a foot, under a foot, and that's where I, I grab the lines all together. So what I do from here is actually lay the lines over my hand, and then I twist towards my body, and then I have, let's do that again so it's in frame here. I twist towards my body, and then I have this. So what you're actually gonna do from here is that same exact process pulled through. So I'm gonna pull, the lines that I grabbed after I twisted, I'm going to pull those through. So then you want to take your opposite hand and take and go through again. So what you're going to do here is you grab all the lines, you pull through. Now it's hard because I'm not standing up and I've got to hold uh, hold the camera and then show this in frame. So then again, once I have a, a loop made, I will grab and I will come through back again with my opposite hand, still holding the lines that I grab every time I go through. So, you're gonna go through, grab all of the line, make sure you don't miss any, and you pull through. And now it depends on how tight you do it, but you can see here, already I'm making a good braid. Well, again, crochet. But, what the nice thing about this is, is as soon as you go to undo your, your lines, like I showed, these all just pull right out. So you're not knotting anything, and this is one, one technique that I really like, um, that I, I've been able to use for myself, that I have found has worked incredibly well and it allows me to unpack my wing and uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe under a minute or so. So this is what I like to do and I'll show uh, what I do next after this process. You can see here what I was talking about. So I came in, I grabbed here and this is where I started to wrap. Now, how hard you let these risers fall and tighten up at the bottom of your loop is how uh, tight these loops are gonna be. So if you wanna leave them a little looser, that's usually what I do. Um, that's kind of what I would recommend. Uh, just so they're not as tight when you want to pull them out. So you can see I go all the way up until I can't go up anymore into my rosette. So this is the whole wing here. And I actually make one big loop uh, towards the end. And I leave this quite open, you can see there. Um, and I do this for a couple reasons. I do this so that um, when I go to put the, uh, the wing in the bag, I have something to hold. So I can grab that loop right there. And when I grab that loop, it allows me to set my entire rosette, including the lines falling to the side, right down into my bag. Um, I'm gonna show you how I do that and then my next step into packing up the wing. So what I do next after that is I get my bag and I try to lay this thing out as evenly as I can. Um, it is kind of, it makes a circle, but the hard part is, is it doesn't, doesn't wanna make a perfect circle. So it always is kind of folding in on itself, which makes it challenging. Um, some bags are better than others. Some aren't actually a circle. Some are more of a uh, more like cylinder shape that can take the wing a little bit easier. But I try to get it just as best I can. 
um, and I'll just leave it like that. So then what I'll do, I'll come over and I'll grab that big loop. And you can see, I kind of just usually let my risers fall. Um, it's better if you don't, um, but especially with this camera here, it makes it a little bit more challenging. So in each bag, or in some bags and some not, it's, there's a spot for your risers to go. Some, if there's not a spot for them to go, there will be a, uh, or you'll get a bag included to where that you can, where you can actually put your risers inside of. This bag, I'm trying to show you here, this bag has um, a spot for your riders to go in. So what I like to do, um, obviously when you're bringing your your wing up and to into the rosette and everything, I actually like to come in and the first thing I'll do before you do anything else, because you do not want these lines to get twisted in between each other, is I'll set my riders and I will put them down in the bag there. This allows me to just make sure that I'm not gonna get anything stuck. Um, and make sure that I'm gonna just make make it get in there and nothing's gonna cross or anything like that. So the next thing I do is after I've gotten those risers into the bag there, um, I actually like to come in and I um, make sure that the wing is pretty much in the center of that bag. You can't really see the bag there um, anymore. Um, and that's because it's, it's larger than the bag, but we're gonna get it to fit in there. Um, so down in there, I've got my risers all tucked away in the bag. So what this is gonna allow me to do now, is you can see all the pockets or the uh, leading edge of the wing is exposed. So what I come and do next is I come and I find the center of the wing. This wing, it's really easy. I've got a big black dot there. So I like to come one over and there's a little bit of a, you know, a hole for the, the air to go in through and then it's like the entire wing. I come in, I put my hand through that and I will just start stacking these. Um, I do this with two hands usually, I'm holding the camera here. Um, and I'll just keep going until the end of the wing. There's, once you get to a certain point at the end of the wing, there's no more, um, there's nothing left to, to grab onto. So that's when I stop and then I will set that down as high as I can. Sometimes I'll even hold it in between my knees and then I'll go into the other side of the wing. Then I put them all together and after that I will fold all of them in towards the center of the wing. This makes sure that none of these nylon rods in there are gonna snap or get broken uh, in any way. And this, um, in my opinion, is gonna make your wing last a lot longer than someone that just tucks their tucks their wing away. Um, I've seen people and I know of people that, that don't do this and their wings look perfect, but this is an older wing. This is a 2014 uh, 23 meter um, universal from Dudek and I found that you know why not just try to keep it as nice as you can if it takes a couple extra minutes to do this why not do it so this is my uh, technique and I'm gonna show you at the end of what it looks like so after this I come in and I will kind of just pick up the bottom of the wing you want to make sure that you're grabbing all the way underneath and then I like to kind of pull the bag out a little bit more I think that this um, you just basically want to get this in the wing or into the bag the wing into the bag so I think this is one of the easiest ways to do it I don't really know how else you would do it but you want to just keep grabbing the bottom of the wing and you want to just keep tucking it in underneath the bag and you can kind of pull the bag up and try to get that that wing just as far down in there as you can being that you have the leading edges of the wing in the center and kind of out of the way and making sure that they're going to be as protected as they can i think this part doesn't have to be done as near as near as precisely as someone that said uh, let's say doesn't uh tuck in the wing uh, the leading edges of the wing as much. So here I basically got the whole thing done. Um, all I like to continue to do here is I like to just grab the string. I like to just pull it pretty hard. Uh, and I just continue to pull down this drawstring, at least on this bag. A lot of bags are very similar, so you can use this technique in almost anything. Uh, just the packing up portion at the end is not nearly that bad. Um, when you do it this way. I know that there is faster ways to do it. But like I've said, I think this is the way that's going to give you the best results in actually, you know, protecting your wing for longevity. Um, this is this is the way that I do it. I know there's ways that do it the same, or people that do it the same way as me. Um, take it for what it's worth. This is the way I like to do it. Um, hopefully, you've learned a little something. I'm going to be putting out a couple more videos on paramotoring in general. I am actually a self-trained. Uh, more or less self-trained person that is going to be flying here soon. I'm actually looking into a top 80. I'm a, I'm a smaller guy with a 23 meter universal. I think that's going to be the perfect combo. Um, I am only like 140 pounds, so I don't really need you know a Moster 185 or anything larger like that. I think a, a top 80 would do me just fine. Plus, I don't really like dealing with the weight. Um, being that I am a little bit smaller, I just think it, it it'll fit me a little bit better. But if you don't 
if you know if you have any uh, questions or anything about how I do this uh, leave some comments um, like I said I'm gonna be trying to put out some more videos I've got some new camera gear and everything hopefully it looks good hope the audio is good there wasn't too much wind noise it's a little bit windy today um, but yeah, go ahead and uh, leave a comment, you know, consider subscribing. Like I said, I'm going to be putting out some more videos. So uh, thanks for coming along. Hopefully you learned a little something today. Take care.